Hi, my name is Bokhad al -Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the conditions to define the parallel and orthogonal vectors. So let's start talking about the parallel vectors first of all. So if you remember, since the school, we learn about the parallel lines as the lines which never intersect, right? So while for the vectors, it appears, the parallel vectors are going to intersect infinitely many times. So again, so the two vectors looks parallel for us, but the problem is we are always going to deal with the position vectors. So essentially, both of the vectors should start from the origin. So ba basically, I need to replace this uh, yellow vector to the origin again, so to the origin. So essentially, I just need to get this yellow vector and put this as the origin. And if you if you look to this, so it's going to be just simply on the top of the first vector, right? So this is the u vector. Let's say this is the v vector. So the two vectors on two position vectors are going to be parallel if they are on the top of each other. So or basically, you can get one of the vectors by just scaling the another one. Scaling means by just making the another vector shorter or longer. So in this case, for example, the v vector is clear that can be obtained by multiplying the u to some constant. So this is going to be the condition when the vectors are parallel. So let's do an example. For example, this vector u can be given as the components, let's say, t and t. And the vector v is can be given with the components, let's say, uh, 3 and 3. And this means that these two vectors are parallel because 3 and 3 can be obtained by multiplying 2 and 2 to some constant, for example, in this case, 3 over 2. If you multiply 3 over 2 to both of these vectors, it's going to be 3 over 2 times the 2, 3 over 2 times the 2. It's going to be, again, 3 and 3. So sometimes for the three-dimensional, oh, and, and this works for any vector, so essentially, let your given t, u, and v, from the n dimensional on the n dimensional space, it means that the u is given with n components, v is given with n components, v one and so on, v n. Then uh, u times the k is equal to the v implies that these two vectors are parallel, or if the two vectors are parallel, then this condition is going to work. Well, sometimes we need to deal with this kind of problems where you are given a vector, let's say uh, 2, 4, and k, and another vector, let's say, was the components of uh, 3, uh, 3, 6, and 9, for example. Okay, Then the question would ask you, hey, for what value of the k these two vectors are parallel? So find the value for the k, so this, this, these two vectors are parallel. So in order to look this, I would like to divide basically the components. So basically 3 divided to the 2 is going to be a 1 and a half, right? So the first component divided to the first component. So let's divide the second components of the two vectors. So 6 divided to the 4 is again 1 and a half, right? So the scaling constant should be 1 and a half. So essentially, if you multiply the first vector u to the 1 and a half, you need to get the second vector, OK? And at the same time, in order to find the k, so which so we need to multiply one and a half to the k in order to get the nine, right? So from here, it is clear that the k should be equal to the k nine divided to the one and a half, which is equal to the six. So essentially, if I substitute the k to be equal to the six, the two vectors are becoming parallel. So this kind of problems are uh, are usually asked from you when you need to define the parallel vectors. But when you are going to have a zero there, you need to be very careful. For example, uh, so let, let's do an example. So let's say you are given a zero. Z By the way, so zero, zero, zero vector is parallel. So let's let's write this as a oh, it's it's a note. Note that if u is given as the zero, zero, zero vector is parallel to any vector to any vector, right? Why? Because, for example, you are given a vector, let's say, for example, 
v vector with the components one, two, three, right? If you remember by the definition, the multiplication of a constant to one of the vectors should give you the second one, right? So you can multiply any constant as a u, zero and zero. Oh, uh, uh, Oh, okay, so, sorry. So if you're given 0, 0, 0, uh, it's going to be parallel to the 1, 2, 3. You can always find a constant, right? So you can multiply this v vector to the 0 in order to get 0 and 0 and 0. So if this constant exists, then these two vectors are going to be parallel. By the way, so this constant doesn't exist always, right? For example, if you've got like a 1 and 2 and 1 and 0 vectors, okay? So no matter what constant you put here, so these two vectors are never going to be equal, okay? So that's why these two vectors are not parallel. So, well, the zero, zero, zero vector is going to be always parallel because you can multiply any vector to some constant, to the zero, in order to get zero, zero, zero vector. So this is about some properties of the parallel vectors. So this is important condition about the parallel vectors and the zero vector is parallel to all the other vectors. Now let's discuss about the perpendicular vectors or orthogonal vectors. Perpendicular or orthogonal. So first of all, we should define what is what, what we call as an orthogonal vector, right? So let's say this is the u vector and you are given another vector v, so this, they are called orthogonal or perpendicular if the angle between them is 90 degrees or pi over t. Well, if you remember, we can find the angle of these two vectors using this formula, which is going to be u dot v divided to the norm of the u, the norm of the v. Please note that we're talking about non-zero vectors, right? So if these two vectors are orthogonal, then the theta should be equal to the pi over t, and we know that the cosine of the pi over t is equal to the zero. So essentially, this equation should be equal when u is orthogonal to the v, right? This implies that this is equal as uh, this is equal to the zero only when the numerator is equal to the zero, right? So essentially, u dot v should be equal to the zero. Again, if the two vectors are orthogonal, uh, then the u times the v as a scalar product is going to be equal to the zero. We can quickly check this. For example, let's say you're given a vector u with the components minus t and 1, and a v is given with the 1 and 2. We can even try to sketch these two vectors. Say minus t and 1. So, sorry. So let's say this is going to be our rectangular coordinate system, x and y. Minus t and 1 is going to be minus t and 1. So this vector is somewhere here, minus t and 1, and, and 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 is going to be somewhere here. And it's clear uh, from this picture that they are orthogonal, right? So essentially the angle between them is 90 degrees or pi over t. So let's check the scalar product. So the multiplication of the u to the v is going to be minus t1 times to the 1 and 2. It's going to be minus 2 times to the 1 plus 1 times to the 2. It's going to be 0. Okay? So if the two vectors are perpendicular, the end the scalar product is equal to the zero. So sometimes you need to deal with the, with the equations where, for example, you're given a vector k, zero, and t, then you're given the another vector v, uh, let's say it was a component three, three, five, and you are asked to figure out the value for the k, or what value of the k, these two vectors, u and v are perpendicular. So what you need to do is you need to basically multiply the scalar product Multiply these two uh, vectors as a scalar product and equalize this to the zero. So let's multiply u to the v. It's going to be 3 times to the k plus 0 times to the k plus 2 times to the 5. And this should be equal to the zero, right? And from here, it is clear that the k is equal to the minus 10 over 3. For this value of the k, these two vectors are perpendicular. 
So please note that if you are given a zero vector, so let's say yours given as a zero, zero, zero vector, is orthogonal, orthogonal to any vector. V was the components V1, V2, and V3, right? Why? Because the multiplication of this vector 0, 0, 0 to the V as the scalar product is going to give you 0. Okay? So this is a really interesting fact that the 0 vector is going to be always perpendicular to any vector. And at the same time, this vector 0, 0, 0 is going to be always parallel to any vector. Well, in this lecture, we discuss about the parallel vectors, orthogonal vectors. We talk about the zero vector and its connection between the parallel vectors and the perpendicular vectors. And I hope that this video was helpful for you.